This video is sponsored by KiwiCo, more about them later. Do you remember when I built this mechanical AT-AT -AT from the Star Wars? And that's because the toys had these mechanical legs that you had to move with your hands. That project did pretty well on YouTube, so now I'm going to build one big enough to ride on. So I went bonkers on Amazon and bought all these costume parts and there's still more to come. It's a bit premature really because we've actually got to build the whole thing first. I found this book about the Star Wars and it shows you all sorts of vehicle cutaways so you can see what's inside. And you can see all of the gearing mechanisms inside the AT-80's legs. It looks pretty complicated though so um, I mean that's fiction anyway. So I'm just going to take the small one I made and scale it up and make everything massive. The little AT-80 -AT that I built used parallelograms for each half of the leg and it had this gearing arrangement built into those parallelograms using an RC servo to drive it. It could turn on the spot as well just by lifting up each leg and swinging the legs round and we'll look at that part of the mechanism later on. See this gear in the leg? Look at the size of it! See this parallelogram piece here which is the front of one leg? Look at that! Look how big it is! Look at it! Thanks to Lulzbar for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Lots of these parts are 3D printed. This big gear is printed on the Taz long bed with a 1.2mm nozzle, as is the gear that's going to drive it. I've also got some ends that are going to go onto the 4040 extrusion to make up the main structure. There are some other parts as well, and those are printed with a 0.5mm nozzle. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, you can now get 10% off at 3dfuel.com with my special code and link, and I'll get a small commission. I'm going to be using 4040 extrusion along with these T-nuts which have M5 threads in them and those go into the slots in the extrusion so that we can screw in a bolt or a machine screw and that can fasten down a plate. The first part has four of those T-nuts installed and it's a 3D printed plate so I'm going to put four bolts in there and screw that down nice and tight. And that piece fits into my giant gear which features in each half of the leg and there's two of those to go in the two notches. That plate is fastened to the plastic with four M6 bolts and there's a space I left inside so I can get a spanner in and put a nut on and tighten that up. So now both of those are attached. We now need some T-plates though for the rest of the assembly and those fit on each end of those crossbars. I've got some longer 4040 extrusions and those fit on either side of the crossbars with the rest of that T-piece and they're all tightened on again with bolts and those T-nuts. And that makes a kind of H-shaped thing with two crossbars and the gear in the middle. It's now time to put the pivot points on the end of those long extrusions and I've printed these parts again with a 1.2mm nozzle and I've left a recess there for a shim which I've printed with a 0.5mm nozzle so that I can make something tolerant that we can put bearings in and those fit back and front. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project, and also these collar clamps which I'm going to be using later in the build. Those are fitted back and front in each of those blocks, and that means we've got quite a lot of bearings because we've got quite a lot of blocks, there's around 160 bearings. The white ends go onto those double H-bar things, of course, with the gear in, and that's going to make half a parallelogram pivoting at the top and bottom. There's also kind of a blank one with no gear in, and that's going to go opposite it to make the whole parallelogram. I've also got the thinner version, and that's slightly slimmer, and that goes inside those so that pivot points overlap, and that's for the bottom of the leg, and that also goes inside the feet. So before we can build up the legs, we need something to mount them on, so it's time to build some feet. Of course, I want to make something that looks like AT-AT -AT feet, so we're going to make a flat pack kit out of CNC plywood, because it's really easy to get hold of, really easy to cut and join, and really easy to paint, because we want it to look white, of course. So I've made a flat pack kit which goes together with some glue and some screws into some joints. We've got these pieces which go in like so and they're screwed in from the back. There's two of those and those fit into the slots in the base which are also glued and screwed on and then we can apply glue to the top and put the top on which is another very similar piece. It's pretty hard to get it to fit perfectly though so we do need to persuade it a little bit. But then after that we can glue and screw the whole thing together. And then we've got some little toe extensions because they wouldn't fit in the machine and I couldn't cut it all in one piece. Yep, there's four of those. And I also painted them white. It's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is KiwiCo. 
I've loved building projects since I was a child, and that's the case for many STEM creators. Many of us wish KiwiCo had been around back then. KiwiCo provide monthly crates that contain fun hands-on projects which are designed by experts and tested by kids. There are nine different lines, so there's something for every interest and age range. You can also buy single crates, so those make great gifts, or you can just try it out without subscribing. I love experimenting with mechanisms, and my 80-80 project is basically a construction kit, but one that I designed, so KiwiCo kits are a great way to experiment and learn. I've got the KiwiCo Drift Motorcycle Kit, which includes everything you need to put it together and make it work, including the batteries. There are full instructions, and also a copy of Tinkerzine, which is specifically about motorcycles. The parts are made from laser cut wood, as well as plastic parts like the wheels. This kit teaches about basic drive mechanisms and belt reductions, and it's also lots of fun, which is important to keep kids engaged. So if you want to try it out and support the channel, click the link in the video description, and you can use code James Bruton to get 50% off your first month. On top of each foot is a frame made of more brackets and more 4040 extrusion, which is eventually going to bolt on. We do need some axles though to go for all of those pivot points, so I've cut up some 8mm stainless steel rod. And that fits in bushings in some larger prints again, so that we can make the pivot points at either side of the bottom of the parallelogram. I've got a couple of nylon washers as spacers in between those parts, and then the thinner lower leg can be pushed in. And then we can push that rod all the way through to go through all of the bearings, and put the bushing on the other end. So two more nylon washers, and we can put the other end on that's fixed onto that frame that fits onto the foot. And I'm using those collar clamps there to stop that axle slipping out, and we'll have one of those on each corner. So now I've got these two hinged points on the foot base frame which move independently of each other, but what we actually want is them to move so that they move together, so we need another piece to put on the top which is essentially going to be the knee joint. That is another massive 3D print made of 1.2mm nozzle and some bushings in there again with some stainless steel rod. And that fits in between the top of the pivot point as you might imagine and also overlaps with the top of the leg. So that's one parallelogram assembled and I've got it on the foot here but it's not bolted on because it's much easier to work on without uh, it being bolted on because the foot's quite big and I can slide the T-nuts in more easily. And remember we've still got the upper stage of this leg to go that goes twice as tall again, that's the wider part. But for now we want to use this gear which is a massive gear that's going to drive this gear track to operate the parallelogram, get some motors in and see how strong it is. To mount the big gear in precisely the right place, I've made this adjustable bracket, which has a gap in the middle and it's got two pieces. And that means I only have to print the shim again to get the thing exactly the right spacing, and then bolt it down, and if it's not the right spacing, I can just make a fatter shim rather than reprinting the whole thing. So I've got two of those, and there's also a clamp to clamp an axle. So that goes onto one side of my leg, and I've got another one on the other side, again attached to that T-slot, and it holds an axle, which means that gear perfectly tracks the big gear, and that works perfectly and the tension remains constant. And the reason that this gear tracks the big gear perfectly as I move this parallelogram is because the distance between the centre of the little gear and the centre of the big gear, if it had a centre, is the same as the distance between the top of my parallelogram. And that means we can move this whole thing up and down anywhere in the parallelogram and we'd still find those two gears track absolutely perfectly. And now what we need to do is go and power that gear and that's got a much bigger gear on it, which is here. And then we need to put some motors on that to power it, and that should power the whole leg. So we're using these Gimson Robotics motors that have 100 to 1 gear heads or thereabouts. They're 12 volt motors, and they've got a 10 millimeter shaft with a keyway on, so we can attach a plastic gear. I need a mount for those, so again, we've got the 1.2 millimeter nozzle out and the 3D fuel filament, and we've made some mounts for those. Those mounts have a faceplate for the motor to stop it spinning round, and also a clamp with an M6 bolt, and that actually grips the gearbox rather than the motor, so air can still circulate around the motor and it won't overheat. On there, I've put a 3D printed gear, and that 3D printed gear has a grub screw, and also the key in the keyway and a little nut to hold the grub screw so we can do it up nice and tight and it won't spin around freely. There's actually two motors in each stage of the leg, so one above and one below that gear and those are fitted on those crossbars.
And what's good about this is that everything's adjustable, so I can put a bigger shim in there, or a smaller one, if I want to move that gear in and out to mesh with the really big gear. And then the motors are on these crossbars, and of course those are on those T-slots, so I could slide those up and down and tighten them in place. Then I can get all my gears to mesh perfectly, and it's all built inherently into the whole design. So I've bolted one of the feet onto this, and that's so I can stand on the base, and I've wired the motors together, and I've got a battery, and we're going to power up the motors, see how fast it goes and how strong it is. So that's more than fast enough for walking, I think. But how strong is it? Let's see if I can stop it with my hands. No, I can't stop that. Let's just try it the other way. No. Oh, I've got to kill it before it hits the end stop. That's extremely strong. And as you'd expect, I've been building four of these units all along. So here they are, all four of them, because we've got four legs. Those are only half legs, though, so we've still got to build the next stage of the leg on top of all of them. As you'd expect, that's another parallelogram with another back and front and another gear in it. And that piece, as you can see, fits on the outside of the thinner lower leg and shares the same pivot points, which is kind of crucial for the inverse kinematics. There's another piece that goes on the top of two of the legs, and the other two are slightly different, we'll look at later. Again, we've got that gear tracking the big gear, and we've got two motors. So we've got four motors in total for the whole leg, which is quite a few motors. That's 16 for the whole robot. Yes, I've put all the tops on now and all the feet on, so we've now got four legs. Yes, it was quite a lot of work, but hopefully it'll pay off. So all four feet are on, and all of the legs are assembled with all of their motors and all of their gears and everything else. And you'll notice two of these legs are slightly longer, they've got 3D printed boosters attached to them, and that's because they need to cross over so that the legs can swing out and it can rotate on the spot. Right, I've got a kid's swing, and I've just put a piece of wood across these two legs. Obviously, they're strong enough to hold me when they're upright, but have they got enough force to lift me if I make them bend down? So I've wired all the motors together with some chocolate block and some cables on both sides, so I can just run all the motors, and I've got a battery and some wires in the middle. Right, let's see what happens. Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's more than strong enough. Obviously there's no position control, so once it goes down too much, then my mass keeps pulling it down. But eventually we'll have feedback and everyone will be a servo so we can hold position. But that's got no problem lifting me at all. So this is more than strong enough to lift me, but actually it will never have to lift me on two legs. The most it'll have to do is push three legs backwards while one foot comes forwards, because we'll have inverse kinematics to plot the position of the feet properly. And you can check out more about that in the video I made with the small AT-80. We've still got the whole top chassis to build for the robot to attach the legs together, and then we've got to do a control system which does inverse kinematics and interpolation, and some other special features because it's such a big machine. That's all going to be in part two, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and look out for that video.